I remember being a poor high school student in the San Francisco Bay Area in the mid-90s. Money was always tight in our immigrant Chinese household. And if you told me that the world was full of money then, I wouldn't believe you. Where was it? And how could we get some of this? Yet here we are in 2021. Capital, as they say, is cheap. The world is overflowing with capital. Money printer go burr. So much money that today the banks don't want the money because they can't do anything with it. Banks don't even want to hold the trillions of dollars of cash held by corporations anymore. And a lot of people say this is a bad thing. Here's what I say though. Money being cheap means this is the most growth mindset part of history ever. There's absolutely no excuse for us to not deeply invest in every kind of technology and every business that can take that money to create more value in the world. Just because banks don't have a good idea for how to use it doesn't mean you can't put it to good use. It's never been a better time to start a profitable business that solves problems for other people. In fact, I think given what we just talked about, it's one of the most important things we could be doing. Let's get started. There's so much money in the world and that's very good news because here's what we need to do with it. First off, let's get started by thinking about how we got here. And to do that, here was President Nixon in August of 1971. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Nixon decided you wouldn't be able to convert dollars for gold anymore. Why? France, led by Charles de Gaulle, had sent a warship to pick up the gold they were due. Here's de Gaulle in 1965, six years earlier. Entraîne les Américains à s'endetter et à s'endetter gratuitement vis-à-vis -vis de l'étranger. Car ce qu'ils lui doivent, ils le lui payent tout au moins en partie avec des dollars qu'il ne tient qu'à eux des maîtres. Of course. The one thing that de Gaulle was actually worried about, money printing, was made a far more potent reality when the one thing tethering US dollars to some fundamental measure was removed. What happened from there? Well, a lot of money got printed, which resulted in crazy inflation. And that inflation looked like these graphs. When a lot of money gets added to the system, it goes into the hands of people who spend that money. And then given supply and demand, prices go up. So then each dollar doesn't go quite as far as it did before. Inflation means each dollar buys less over time. That's when normal consumers get their hands on the money. It's not just goods and services that get inflated though, it's also asset prices, real estate, stocks, and any asset you might hold that might be used as a store of value that will get inflated too. Only when that happens, we call it an asset price bubble. This money is making it back into the stock market, perhaps through cheap debt and leverage, and it's making price earnings ratios go crazy. So here's the thing, Charles de Gaulle in 1965, he was right. The US has been printing money. Total money supply went from $15.3 trillion at the start of 2020 to $18.7 trillion in September. 18% of all dollars in circulation were printed last year in 2020. So we're talking about trillions of dollars sloshing about, newly printed. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we as a central bank, we have the ability to create money. Uh, digitally, and we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities, and that, that actually increases the money supply. So consumer prices are going up and so are the prices on the stock market. And from what we know, companies have more cash than ever. So much cash that the banks don't even want to hold onto their dollars anymore. Over $17.09 trillion of commercial deposits are being held by the banks as of this year. Look at that jump during the pandemic. It's wild. 
That means companies are holding on to way more cash than they ever have before. Here's Peter Thiel in 2012 on stage with Google CEO Eric Schmidt, berating him on stage about the $50 billion cash hoard Google was holding on to at that moment. You know, Google also has 30, 40, 50 billion in cash. It has no idea how to invest that money in technology effectively. And so it prefers getting 0% interest from Mr. Bernanke. Effectively, the cash sort of gets burned away over time through inflation because there are no ideas that Google has. But they have, you have $50 billion at Google. Why don't you spend it on doing more in tech? Or are you out of ideas? And, it's not a, and I think Google does more than most companies. You know, I'm, I'm, you're trying to do things with self-driving cars and supposedly with asteroid mining, although maybe that's just part of the propaganda ministry. Um, <laughs> and, you know, but, but, and you're doing more than Microsoft or Apple or you know, a lot of these other companies. Amazon's the only one in my mind, of the big tech companies that's actually reinvesting all its money, that has enough of a vision of the future, that they're actually able to reinvest all their profits. They, they make if less were, profit if, than Google does. But if, if we're living in an accelerating technological world, and you have 0% interest rates in yeah. the background, you should be able to invest all of your money in, um, in, uh, in things that will return it many times over. I'm gonna, and the fact that you're out of ideas, I, maybe it's a political problem, the government's outlawed things, but uh, it's, um, right, um, it still is a problem. And that was in 2012. Google's cash hoard now is over 115 billion as of 2021. Thiel says something really important here. We are living in an accelerating 0% cash world. And the result, he says, is that Google seems to be out of ideas for how to use the money. And that creates a big conundrum. What are you gonna do with all these crazy commercial deposits? What the huge commercial deposits are saying now is that literally most companies don't know how to deploy the cash and capital investments that return more money over time. In more recent times, and this is a troubling quote, Thiel has said, there's a Marxist theory that the time for communism would come when the interest rates went to zero because the 0% interest rate was a sign that the capitalists no longer had any idea what to do with their money. So are we there? Are we at the end of capitalism? Maybe. I mean, without an external force, we might be. Perhaps all of society is really no better off right now than large teams of overpaid, overfed, underworked software engineers roaming around the halls of a campus in Mountain View, California. But you know what? Both you and I know that's not true. There is something else that can solve these problems and it's technology. It's applying that capital to things that are new, interesting, different, that solve problems, create markets, and ultimately create jobs and prosperity in the world. This is why startups must exist. And you, yes you, it's you who needs to create them. So what do you do if you realize there's infinite money in the world? It's a strange concept. These corporations and entities that control massive amounts of money are holding on to stored kinetic energy, energy that needs to be released to new things that will generate even more prosperity and more wealth in the world. How though? I have some quick thoughts. First, let's talk about climate change. It's definitely one of the most enduring challenges to all of humanity in our lifetime. If we don't prevent global warming from rising above 1.5 degrees Celsius, we're gonna risk an extinction level event where there's just runaway global warming. But there is new technology coming online now that is just turning out to be carbon negative. This means that a new tool is coming online, removing carbon, from the atmosphere and doing it in a way that doesn't put more carbon out. This is a big moment for humanity because it's lucky that we have a printing press, a printing press that can be fed into this that then will solve global warming. Next, I'm pretty excited about what's coming down the pipe in robotics. We've been really bullish on profitable robotics companies that are building things that just plain make money. What used to be science fiction is now increasingly becoming science fact. Our early investment in cruise automation, the company that really taught all of us that self-driving could really exist as a standalone business, they showed us that computers can see now and that's led to more of our work and things that touch everything from cashier's checkout with standard cognition to industrial robots with Freedom Robotics. You can believe the Jetsons future is coming. It's right around the corner. Next, FinTech. 
we can't really talk about too much money without discussing how out of ideas traditional finance firms and banks really are. Banks are there to actually grease the wheels of commerce, but it's clear these days they just aren't doing their job. It's gonna be time for challenger banks like Empower Financial or the future of decentralized finance through cryptocurrencies that will replace all of these traditional finance companies. Everything that can be lent against will be. Insurance, payments, lending, all manner of fintech will be eaten by software. And whatever took fax machines and paper and pencil will be replaced by great software helping people do things better, faster, cheaper. It's inevitable. Finally, my job, what I get up in the morning every day for, deploying venture capital. Clearly, it's our jobs as investors to invest in great teams and ideas. And when they succeed in the marketplace, they create more wealth in the world that might not have existed before. Before, this rate of innovation was held back by lack of capital. Now, there's no good reason for that. This is literally the most growth mindset time in the world to ever be alive. If you had an idea 100 years ago, or even before 1971, you probably already had to be wealthy from your family to even be able to create a new business. Today, with zero interest rates and trillions of dollars sitting in bank accounts around the world, the future should only be limited by our own ingenuity, our own skills, our own ability to create organizations, and our own vision for what we want the future to look like. Let's go get it. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you like this, please post it to Twitter, Facebook, or send it to your friends who might really enjoy this. I hope this helps you get ahead and I hope it helps your friends too. What are you working on? I wanna hear about it in the comments below. Finally, as always, please click the subscribe button and the like button to help me know what you wanna hear more about. This is what we do every week. We try to figure out the world we live in and how you, yes you, through technology, business, and mastering your own mind can put a dent in the universe. And once you realize you can do that, you'll never be the same again. I will see you next week.